Hi everyone and uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, the topic of my presentation today is from idea to production, the Asia Castilla OpenShift journey. So, um, like I said, my name is Eero Arvonen. Uh, I've been doing uh, Java development since about 2011, so about seven years. Been with Suomen Asiakas Tieto for about two and a half years, and I got the title of application architect about a year ago. So, <clears throat> since I'm here re representing our company as well, I'm just going to briefly introduce us as, introduce us as well. Uh, the company name is Suomen Asiakas Tieto. There's been a bunch of mergers along the way, but our oldest branch uh, was founded in 1905. So, yeah, talk about legacy, I guess. We got um, about <laughs> 150 to 500 employees. Um, that's because there was this little merger um, a couple of months ago, and we um, bought a Swedish company called UC and uh, tripled our headcount. Um, most of the stuff today will be about the old Asiakas Tieto, so I'll only be touching about the um, Swedish part. Um, yeah, so our IT is about 30 people, 50-50 between dev and ops. And um, <clears throat> we've been publicly traded for about um, three and a half years now. We um, listed on the Helsinki Stock Exchange in 2015. So what is it that we actually do? Uh, well, we're the um, leading business and consumer information service provider in Finland and nowadays in Sweden as well. Uh, we automize decision making and risk management processes for banks and so on. Um, <clears throat> we have so many products, I, don't, I can't even name half of them, but um, I'm going to name the few that I've been personally uh, working with. So I've coded, for example, an application that does credit ratings for, uh, of individuals and companies for, say, um, mortgage applications. And we also, well, I've also coded a service that is targeted uh, to banks mostly, and has to do with know your customer and anti-money laundering legislation. So, <clears throat> I think even well before OpenShift, our uh, ID was uh, IT was pretty um, efficient. Um, we're mostly doing development in-house, using some consultants as well, but mostly in-house. And on average, we're, uh, we deploy a new service or a new version almost every day. Um, uh, our software has a, a pretty uniform architecture, um, especially on our backend. If you work with one backend service, you can basically work with them all because they're quite similar. And considering the fact that virtually every part of our business has to do with IT, um, we compare pretty well with the with the costs of uh, developing and maintaining our IT. <clears throat> and this definitely has to do with the uniform ar architecture because it helps both in the operations and the development side. But uh, I don't think that's enough. Uh, we need to stay ahead as well. Um, and here's a couple of things we have trouble with. First of all, um, scaling is painful. Uh, we have a set number of uh, front-end and back-end um, servers and the setting of new ones is pretty time-consuming and expensive. And because the scaling is so painful, our current application servers are pretty crammed with, with applications. And if one of them goes haywire, it can affect a whole bunch of other services as well. And don't let my boss know I said this, but I think the <laughs> uniform architecture is uh, sometimes holding us back as well, because uh, every new service has to conform to a, a specific um, standard. So it's pretty hard to test new stuff sometimes. So Red Hat offered to do an OpenShift proof of concept project with us. Uh, this is, uh, I think, April 2017. So we basically started from scratch and installed OpenShift on premise. Uh, we ported an application called Omatieto on it, and we demonstrated high availability. So we can do uh, we could do rolling updates of stuff that was running and. Um, the HTTP session of the of the user was persisted, so there there, there was no um no downtime, and it worked out pretty great. All this in a week. 
So now we're fast forwarding to late autumn 2017, um, so about a year ago. We decided to build a service that runs on OpenShift from the uh, get-go, um, container native, if you will. So what happened was we got some cloud OpenShift from Ambientia. We hired a couple of consultants from Luoto Company. Um, we picked a technology we'd uh, never worked with before. And we had a hard deadline because this was a GDPR compliant service. So uh, it came into effect in May. So our hard deadline was, I think, in March. So no room for error. I mean, <laughs> what could go wrong, right? <clears throat> well, as it turns out, uh, OpenShift made it easier to get everything together, actually. Uh, the reason being, the reasons being was, first of all, the CI CD pipeline, we got, we got that out of the box. Like I mentioned, we had the Node.js, so there was the um, uh, ready source to image tool for that and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we had no issues getting it running in a test environment. Um, and setting up uh, multiple environments was pretty easy as well. When you get the one running, you can just replicate it for specific testing needs. And also, it was uh, inherently portable, so we could move it anywhere if we wanted to pretty easily. So there was no risk to getting stuck in a, a single environment either. So what, what happened was, well, here it is. It's, it's in production. There's a screenshot of it um, on time, on budget, customers happy, and so on and so forth. Um, here's a screenshot of the OpenShift side. Uh, the whole thing runs on 12 deployments with the um, front end application running on two pods, so it's a total of 13 pods. Uh, we had about 10 updates since rollout with no downtime at all. Um, it was a slow summer. We would have done a couple of more developments, but, uh, deployments, but yeah, holidays. Rolling deployments, like I mentioned, no downtime needed. Um, just had to make sure the database changes were backwards compatible. And we're going to actually scale to Sweden later this year, probably. And we're going to make a parallel one, and it's going to pr be pretty easy, because we have the um, templates ready and so on. So yeah. Uh, by this time, uh, we decided to get our own OpenShift cluster as well. So at the end of the spring, this spring, uh, we rolled it out in-house. Um, but at this point, we only had the one service actually published and running on production on OpenShift. So what, what are we going to do with the rest of the 200 or so services that we have is the question. Uh, so the question is how to eat an elephant, right? Well, we, we're going to do it one container at a time. Uh, most of our stuff runs on EAP, so that's something we're getting out of the box, so that's good, right? Uh, enterprise application platform, so it's a Red Hat JBoss release, yeah, all right. So we decided we're going to pick a few candidates to migrate onto OpenShift, and um, we actually decided to focus on Omatieto, which we did on the proof of concept project a year ago. <clears throat> so porting the um, Omatieto uh, was, was it, it was the first time we're porting something, to, so there were all these little things we had to take into account because it wasn't really designed to run in containers. So, well, this is going to be a slightly technical. I hope you don't mind. But first of all, uh, Omatieto generates some Java classes out of web service um, description language files. And those classes pertain to HTTP sessions that are stored on the server side. So in order to persist the session during a uh, rolling update, those classes need to be serializable. So basically, we had to write some binding files and make all the necessary files serializable. And Omatieto had this little assumption that in some environments, there's going to be a service that generates PDF reports, and it's going to be running on localhost. Well, that, that's not the case in OpenShift at all. So that's something we had to take into account. And one of the big things, I think, is the sideways compatibility thing, because you're not going to want to have separate code bases for the old environment and the uh, 
OpenShift environment. You're going to have to have your code in, in, in one place. So that's something we had to take into account. And actually, that's why we have to see the bigger picture here. Um, we can't reinvent the wheel because there's stuff that's been working for years and years. And if we want to actually roll this out in a large scale, we're going to have to have some, um, some things uh, we're going to have to take into account here. So <clears throat> first of all, we have to, I think we have to integrate into existing CI CD, not to mess everything up. Our old Jenkins is full of stuff and we can't just throw that away. We're never going to uh, recover from that. So this is the old way we were um, building and deploying stuff. <coughs> Basically, um, the developer, we're starting from the top left here, uh, the developer commits some uh, code into GitLab. Uh, this triggers a build in Jenkins. Uh, after that, Jenkins deploys uh, the artifact into a testing environment and also copies the um, year or the war file or whatever on an FTP server. And afterwards, if we want to put something into production, um, we're going to fill, fill out some forms and someone's going to approve it. And then a guy from Ops is going to manually install it on one of the EAPs. Uh, also, if you want to roll back from a production, it's, it's a bit of a pain because um, we're going to have to copy the old uh, artifact, the e e uh, ear file or war file or whatever, and we're going to have a special name for it so we know when it's been in production and so on and so forth. It's pretty, pretty complicated. So how does OpenShift affect things? Well, the box on the top is the old way of doing things, and we didn't really change anything, didn't have to, because my philosophy was we're just going to add a couple of things. So in the old jobs, we're only going to add two things. Uh, we're going to publish the artifact, the ear file, into um, Nexus, and we're going to trigger a build in uh, our new Jenkins. Um, the new Jenkins has the source to image tool installed, and it's going to build a Docker image that that it'll push into the um, Docker repository of our OpenShift. Um, and then it's going to deploy the relevant deployment config. Um, there's also separate Jenkins jobs for um, releasing whatever in uh, the testing environment to pre-prod and release whatever in the pre-prod to, um, to production whenever we want to roll. And we're also tagging the um, image streams with, say, 1.0, so we can always have uh, the uh, full uh, backlog of everything that's ever been in production, so we can roll back to uh, whichever version we want. <clears throat> also, um, we all hate uh, big bangs, so I think we should provide an incremental transition path to every um, service we have so we can get it on OpenShift. Um, luckily, we have the uniform architecture, so this is kind of straightforward. Uh, since our um, uh, application architecture is multi-tier, we have to think about how, how, how they can be migrated. So are we going to migrate a whole chain of applications, or can we just move uh, the, the services one at a time? Uh, this is um, how our backend basically looks like. So we have a set number of EAPs with a bunch of um, deployed ears inside them, doing uh, EJB calls within the um, same, very same application server. And the question is, how are we going to migrate this on OpenShift. Uh, I guess one way would be we could just take uh, all the um, uh, s uh, separate services, make them run in a uh, single EAP each. Um, I, I guess this would conform pretty well to the whole micro service architecture thing. Uh, we could also scale all of these applications and not have to replicate uh, the whole server with, with everything in, inside. Uh, although, um, in our experience, running one deployment per EAP takes a bunch of resources, but I guess this might be just a case of not configuring them to be uh, to contain whichever all, only the features we need. Um, it might very well be worth doing, but but um, the problem is it's still going to be a, something of a big bang because we're migrating a bunch of services at once. So this is option two. 
we could just migrate one application and have it connect to the old backend as is. Um, there's a couple of question marks with this as well, though. Um, there's probably a firewall between the left and the right side of the picture, so would uh, require some configuration. Uh, also, well, the real question, I guess, is whether we want to go to the old environment and reconfigure all the EAPs manually to allow for this kind of connections. So I, I'm not sure if we want to do this or not. So the question is, what do? Um, we've identified viable options, but we haven't made any big decisions regarding the back end yet. Um, I guess the most important thing is we know we can do this because I've, I've tried this and it's, it's worse so far. Um, the front end is, is I'm sorry. Uh, the front end, however, is um, pretty straightforward and uh, has high value. So we're going to. So, wait a second. Yeah, so we're going to pick the low-hanging fruits of the front end first and decide on the back end later. And, and that's kind of my point here. You need to identify the opportunities with the, with the biggest impact. Because <coughs> we're running a business, after all, so we always have to mind return on investment. And it might be some services will actually never be migrated in OpenShift. They might live, uh, live out their lives right where they are. They might just gracefully ride off into the sunset, you know? Like this, yeah. So, ser uh, in all seriousness, though, um, there's plenty of things to consider um, with the whole migration to containers. And by this point, I can definitely hear the business people asking, where's the beef? Um, why should we do this? And is it worth it? Well, surprise, um, I think it's uh, definitely worth it to us. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking about it. So. The reasons it's worth it for us is we're moving towards 24-7 services. And like I said, we can do approaches incrementally by migrating speci specific application, uh, application um, chains first. Um, two, we can deploy whenever. Um, sometimes we deploy on Sunday mornings, you know? And I'm hoping we can eventually leave that stuff behind, because I don't want to wake up early on a Sunday. Um, have you ever needed a um, new environment based on, a, say, a feature branch? Or maybe when you're developing a new version, uh, you need to hotfix something in production, and there's going to be a, whole, a lot of shuffling with environments and where, what you're going to install and where? Um, uh, this will definitely help, because when you get your um, uh, templates ready, you can just spin up a new environment in a couple of minutes and have a spe specific, uh, say, Git branch uh, compiled. and deployed in there. Yeah. And remember um, how I um, mentioned it's been hard to try new things? Well, this, this kind of helps that. Uh, for example, deploying the Node.js application, the GDPR compliance service um, I mentioned earlier, um, we could have, I, I don't think we could have ever done it because it would have been a, like a special snowflake in our current environment. It would have been really difficult to get a production, uh, production environment for it. What's more, uh, real-time horizontal scaling. So <clears throat> in our current model, where applications are under, under designated um, servers and hardware, scaling means we have to build identical servers and install all sorts of stuff. And we're actually doing most of this manually still. In the OpenShift world, it's a bit easier because you just have to pro provide OpenShift with the necessary hardware, and it'll just work. Um, there's also a couple of scenarios we'd, we've identified where we could um, need some um, some extra extra juice during some uh, um, some special days of the year, like Black Friday, where we get a lot of credit um, credit queries for when people are buying stuff they can afford really and have to take a um, consumer credit. But wait, there's more. <coughs> Uh, remember the um, UC merger I mentioned before? Um, there's this thing called synergies that were promised to our shareholders. So um, it turns out UC have plenty of stuff running on mainframe, and getting rid of that expensive stuff is, is coming eventually. And it just happens we have this thing called OpenShift now, so um, that might get fun. 
Um, also, we got some big Nordic projects now that we tripled in size. So um, there's been a lot of talk, even on the uh, Swedish side, about OpenShift, and uh, we're gonna start some big stuff um, this um, this fall, this this winter. And that's all, folks. Um, this is where we are with everything. Um, yeah, if you guys gonna want to get in touch, there's this code will take you to my um, LinkedIn page, and. Yeah. Perfect. Any questions? We can take one question, and the because there's a user panel coming up, yep. so we can take more questions then. All right, you're finished. I know. All right. You can save your questions for the AMA panel, but you have to ask questions during the AMA panel. We've got one one back in the back here. No, but oh, well, you do for, for the recording. Yeah. Yeah. For all those people out there on Facebook Live. Oh, the one person following at home? Yeah, the one person asking the question is Irish, right? And yeah. yeah, not Finnish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't count. Um, so the question is about the cultural um, challenges that you faced. Um, can you talk about some of those? Because um, it was quite technical. I'd be interested to know. Right, the cultural challenges. Well, I mean, w since we did the GDPR, service i think i won over a few of the business people as well i mean it's been pretty easy to sell it to the uh, to the tech guys because they they know what what it's about but the business guys um we had the product owner of the gdpr compliance service and others have been now asking how how it went and um i don't know if this is an expression in in english or not but uh, he said it was like the um, toilet of a train <laughs> so <laughs> it, it means that it just works um, so, so this is why everything, uh, everyone in, in house is pretty excited about migrating, and uh, <laughs> that is not going to translate. Well. No, that's not. That, 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 yeah. <laughs> that toilet train. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, we're winning the business people over definitely by actually delivering results.